You may not recall the non-relativistic result, but I'll remind you of it when we get to it. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so here we go. Non-relativistic. Okay, so now this, I'm now going to write this as m plus m squared times 1 plus, this is the 1, plus, I'm going to make this part dimensionless, 2 gamma i minus 1 m m over m over m plus m squared. So now I've written this as the final mass squared, this is the final mass squared, is the sum of masses that were involved in the collision plus a correction factor, meaning the final mass is bigger than the, pair, than the sum of the masses we started with by a correction factor, which depends on gamma minus 1. Well, what's gamma minus 1? Gamma minus 1 is somehow related to the kinetic energy of the object, because the energy of the object is gamma mc squared, and the rest mass energy, the rest, the rest energy of the object is, is just mc squared. So an object's total energy is gamma mc squared, its rest energy is mc squared, so the difference between them, which you might call the kinetic energy, is gamma minus 1 times mc squared. So this is somehow related to the kinetic energy. Okay? So this is the correct relativistic description for the final mass. It's bigger than the sum of the masses by this. But now I want to do one more thing, which is I want to take the limit as uh, the initial velocity goes to zero of this expression. The initial velocity going to zero, meaning I want to take the non-relativistic limit. So in the non-relativistic limit, remember gamma, the non-relativistic limit of gamma, this is something we did, you did in your homework, is the non-relativistic uh, limit of gamma is 1 minus 1, minus one half beta squared, right? Or 1... Sorry, 1 plus 1 half beta squared. This was the non-relativistic limit for gamma. So the non-relativistic limit for gamma minus 1 is 1 half beta i squared. Okay, so this is just a 1 half beta i squared, and that half cancels that half. Okay, so the limit as velocity goes to zero of the final mass squared is just m plus m squared times 1 plus, and this becomes 2 times a half beta, so it's just beta squared, that's the initial velocity squared, m, m, over m plus Okay, now, here's the challenging part, and here's where, uh, where I'm going to move a little fast. So now, I'm going to take the limit. This is becoming very mathematical, but I just want to complete this to demonstrate how nice this solution is. So now, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and this is in the limit that the velocity is small. This is 1 plus epsilon, because as I make the velocity small, this thing becomes small. So this is 1 plus epsilon, and I'm going to take the square root of it, so I get a 1 plus half epsilon. Remember, 1 plus epsilon to the 1 half is 1 plus 1 half epsilon. You use that in your homework. Uh, so when I perform that operation, I get that that the limit as the velocity goes to zero of mf squared is, oh, now I'm taking the square root, so I'm just going to do it mf, is m plus m times 1 plus 1 half m beta i squared, I'm writing that out separately, times uh, 
capital M over capital M plus little m. Okay, now, what is this? What is this quantity? Look at this. This is one-half mv squared. See, it's one-half mv squared. This is the original kinetic energy of the... Uh, it's the this is the original kinetic energy of the bullet in the low-velocity limit. This is the original kinetic energy of the bullet. And then this is a geometric factor, which depends on the ratio of the masses of the, of the original block to the final block. This is exactly the expression that we got for the non-relativistic case. We had it in a slightly different form, though. We said in the non-relativistic case, and I'll write it in orange again, in the non-relativistic case, we said that the amount of energy lost to heat was one-half mv squared, one-half the mass times the initial velocity squared, times m over m plus m. That is the, this is the solution we got in the non-relativistic case, and this is the same solution. It looks different because there's a beta here, but that's because we're talking about mass, not energy. This is an energy, this is a mass. If we multiply through by c squared, this becomes an energy. This becomes a velocity squared. This becomes the kinetic energy. And then it looks like an m over m plus m here, and it looks like an m over m plus m squared here, but this is multiplying m plus m, so m plus m cancels one of those m plus m's. So indeed, we get exactly the same answer in the, in the relativistic case as the non-relativistic case, but notice the difference in interpretation. In the non-relativistic case, we said that there was a loss of kinetic energy, which must go to heat. And we called it the, chain, the heat, or it could go to sound and things like that, but it dissipated from the system. There was a loss in energy, which was 1 half mv squared times this mass ratio. In the relativistic case, we say that that energy is not lost. That energy went into increasing the mass of the final object. Meaning, the fact that the block was heated up over here in the non-relativistic case means that the block is more massive over here. Now, that's a big deal, and there's a lot more to say about that, and I don't have time to say about it, and today's lecture, so I'm sorry about that, but there's a lot to think about there. For one, one of the things this means is if you take a brick and you weigh it, and then you take it off the scale and you hold it over a Bunsen burner and you heat it up to much hotter, and then you put it on the scale, it will weigh more. Now, of course, it's very hard to do that measurement precisely enough to see that, but we now know from experiments analogous to that, in which we change the internal degrees of freedom of very tiny systems and check their mass. For instance, increase the, increase the energy level of an atom and then check its mass. We can see that there are very small mass changes associated with energy changes, so we can detect those experimentally. Um, but uh, it's very hard to do them macroscopically because it's very hard to heat something up to a relativistic temperature. Actually, if you heated up something to a relativistic temperature, it would not, a brick to relativistic temperature, it wouldn't really be a brick anymore. In fact, it wouldn't even be plasma anymore. It would be some very complicated thing. Um, so that experiment can't exactly be done in relativistically, but uh, in, in, uh, in uh, the relativistic calculation, we do track the missing energy uh, uh, correctly. And in fact, notice that we, by conserving form momentum, we conserve not just the momentum, but also the energy, because the energy is a component of the form momentum. Uh, and so we conserve that energy as well, but that energy went into increasing the mass of the final product. Um, uh, and that's a, that's a strange uh, that's strange because in, in, when we did this before, we conserved momentum, we forgot about energy, and then we checked the energy. Here we conserve the momentum and the energy all together, and the way it accounts for the missing energy is it has to make the product more massive.